The Andahazi School of Ballet started in St. Paul 57 years ago, but only recently did it develop into the St. Paul City Ballet, and even more recently as a full-blown ballet company, now operating on Grand Avenue in a great historic space. Half the artistic team is the couple, Jennifer Rockwell and Ross Edwards, and they have their own interesting back-to-ballet story to tell. Let's meet them, step into a rehearsal on the eve of their performance at the Ritz Theater on this three-minute egg. Well, I, I let you go for a second. Yeah, like, it wasn't, yeah, you know, yeah. it was actually a pop no, tune. No, I think that was good. Nice. And I think that yeah, this part, like, after the pirouette down here when we go into the promenade, I think that's going a lot smoother because you're giving that, that little pop. Lift. Lift. Yeah. yeah. I danced my whole life. I, you know, studied. I, my first job was in Europe, dancing professionally in France, and came back with some injuries and met Ross, got married, and we moved here so we could go to graduate school. And for a long time, I just didn't find my fit in the Twin Cities. We actually had to relocate temporarily to St. Paul because we suffered a house fire one year. And my wife was looking for a place to take classes and stumbled upon St. Paul City Ballet. It happened to be the very same month that the professional company was getting started. And uh, they contacted both of us, first Jen, about dancing with them. And then uh, once they found out that she had a husband that danced, uh, they were very eager to, to get me in here too. In my PhD program, I just, I wasn't watching ballet as much. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the time to spend leisurely sort of enjoying it. And I think that was the biggest thing for me, was just getting back to, uh, you know, watching, you know, going to performances, um, you know, throwing some some old tapes in the VCR. Um, yeah, and, and, and um, you know, and, and listening to some music again, and just getting inspired that way. And I think that's what really jumpstarts the creative process, is just immersing yourself back in it. We want the dancing that we do to be very recognizably ballet, um, but at the same time uh, trying to find within that vocabulary, within that movement style, um, a, a bit of a modern direction. It's not like I'm the artistic director or Ross is the artistic director. We are sort of this, we're each a quarter of an artistic director with two other people, Ted Southern and Jennifer Murray. Um, and so we do get to have some input as to, well, what do we want to dance next year? What do we want the season to be like? What do we want to put on stage? And uh, that just creates um, an opportunity for uh, freedom and input and creativity that I think in the ballet world you don't always have. It's, it's often this you know, hierarchy where this guy on high says, you will dance this, be quiet, lose weight, you know, <laughs> this sort of um, almost ab abusive, very tightly controlled environment. This is very free. We enjoy each other's company, the dancers. We like being around each other. We joke around. Um, we can be honest with each other without being hurtful. And I think um, that can still, you can still have excellence. You can still create high quality technique and beautiful art. I'm almost 5'11", and so if I'm only doing classical roles, I look like this, you know, gangly ballerina that's trying to fit into this classical role. And so, um, and it took me a long time as a tall dancer to accept that I'm tall and not feel bad about it. When people say ballet is dead. It's not dead. It's about playing with the music and the movement and make them exciting to an audience but still use that classical repertoire. I think that can be more of a challenge than just, you know, making up a completely new step.